Hi. Hello, Rishi. Can you hear me? Oh, audio. Can you say Can something, you you? Rishi? Yes, thank you. I have couple of people here. That's Shinjil, I think you met the other day. Can you hear me, Rishi? Hello? Can you hear me, Sharish? Yes, I can. Maybe say something again. Yeah, hi. Yeah, now now you're very good. Yeah, yeah. There is some echo problems in this room, so I had a, we had a struggle with that. Yeah. Why do you want nice blackboards? Which brand is this? You said they are good blackboards, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good language. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, I mean, I think they are put up correctly, but I think this is the lower end blackboards that you get on Amazon. What is the brand? Brand. I will have to look it up. Thank you. I don't remember. Yeah. Like they are white cum blackboards. Their white boards are white at the back. And it was interesting because. I asked someone to put it up and I arranged it in the right way facing this side. So he conveniently turned it around and made it whiteboards. And at the last moment, he said, how do you, how do you like it? And I said, no, you have to change the whole thing. Okay. And he was trying to convince me that, no, 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 this is how it is. You cannot do it. This, these things are meant for that side. They really tried to convince me, but then I said, no, 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 there is no way you can put it away. So, and then in the la uh, one hour or so, he immediately did it. But then notice this is hanging, so it is not really fixed okay. on the bottom side. So, so there's some inconvenience because of that, but it's not bad. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's just a matter of putting a paste on it or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Shankar. Hi, how are you? Yeah, doing good, Shankar. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So have, <laughs> yeah. So I have Shingle also, uh, Shinjil also here. Yeah, Shinjil, right? Shinjil, yeah. He just graduated from engineering. Uh, engineering, yeah. Shankar is a faculty in NIT Trichy. And Rishi, you met last time, he's in bits, yeah. And we also have Ashwati, she's not planning to attend the talk, but that's Ashwati, you can say hello. <laughs> that's okay, yeah. yeah. So she's Ashwati the is the, she takes care of specs and like yeah. she's in charge in my absence kind of, so okay. yeah. So this is on some first floor, or I mean, is it a ground floor? Where is it? Other again? Is it a ground floor or first floor? No, or... it's a first floor. I can show you. So this is kind of the outside view, if you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a road. There is a road right next to it that you are not seeing because of the perception, mm -hmm. and that's the boundary of the road. There is a garage, scooter garage. Across yeah, I saw some the... vehicle pass by. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and there are houses on the other side. So you can oh. see the background should tell you that it's Kerala kind of coconut trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So I think we should start probably like typically the attendance is not significant. So, so maybe we won't have many, but today we have uh, Shinjil, so, so that's nice. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, what I want to talk today is uh, I wrote a few sentences on it. There was this uh, discussion that was left open last time and uh, I, I, I found it interesting. Rishi asked, oh, we have David. Yeah, so give me a minute. Hello, David. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hello. <laughs> I have Tony. Oh, nice. I have Tony here too. Tony is with yeah, me. Yeah, I noticed in the background. Oh. Hello, Tony. Yep. <laughs> we'll see if the oh, baby okay. will allow Tony to join us. Okay. So we're just beginning the talk here. So, uh, yeah. So David uh, taught with me in the high school. I taught in Florida for for two years. Uh, so he's currently in Italy seeing Tony in the background. He's visiting his daughter and, and Tony in the background. So that's nice. So, okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, and Venkat is, uh, is working in NIT Trichy. I think uh, most of you guys met him uh, last time. Okay. Hey, Venkat. Oh. <laughs> nice. Hello, Linu Kumar. Yeah, nice. Okay. Linu Kumar is a faculty, physics faculty in Payanur uh, here, about an hour or so from here. Yeah. Okay. So, without uh, delay, let me further delay, let me say, uh, let me uh, start. So, last time <clears throat> uh, we had this uh, discussion that was left open. Uh, Rishi asked the work done by a force is the scalar product of two vectors or uh, the displacement and the force. And one could ask, what about the cross product? Or the question was, uh, why really this dot product? Why is it not something else? Uh, what is the physical relevance of that? But that led to the idea that what does the cross product lead to? And I tried a little bit on my own and uh, I came up with something. So I think it's uh, relevant. So hopefully it'll be uh, useful. So, so again, uh, uh, for uh, some of you guys, like it is going to be a little mathematical, but uh, I think I'll convey the uh, interpretation here. Okay, so we have Newton's laws and Newton's second uh, law say, it says that first find a system, the system has a mass, it is applicable for anything that has a mass. And we are asked talking about the motion of this mass. By motion, we mean the acceleration. That's loose, that's a loose, that a loose uh, statement. Uh, often we will, uh, velocity is what is associated with motion, but here it's the acceleration that plays a more important Part. So mass times acceleration, according to what Newton tells us, is the sum of all the forces. So let me write that as F1 plus F2 plus. So the idea is that identify all the forces that is acting on the mass M, vectorially add them. So it's a mathematical way of adding certain quantities that have symbols, and it will tell you what exactly is the acceleration. So that's a uh, equation that helps us uh, work or find out what's the motion of a particle or predict what a particle is going to do. 
and you do few things one is you can multiply it with a displacement so multiply uh, by displacement right dr okay, so that's a displacement uh, <clears throat> of this equation and that gives you the work energy theorem so this gives us the work energy theorem. So that's the idea that uh, whenever we talk about uh, uh, some, uh, some mechanical uh, leverage that we can get out of some form of energy, that's the kind of uh, equation we use. So that's the main is the equations, um, uh, the Newton's laws, and then you take them they multiply it with dr and then you get work energy theorem the second thing that is popular is you multiply it by time so position and time so let's say you say dt and then you integrate that also and this gives you momentum so it is momentum and uh, let's say impulse or you can say conservation of our cure. So that's two popular concepts that's introduced. Here, uh, what I want to do is that instead of taking that multiplying involves two ways you can multiply vectors. So here I'll multiply uh, it using a cross product and see what it uh, leads to. So, so for that, before I go in there, uh, or let's say a uh, question is, so this is a, what we are addressing here. So question is what if it is, what if we do dr crossed with mass times acceleration is equal to, let's say, let's have only one force in there, or this is the total force that we are uh, talking about. So that's the equation. I have to do this on both uh, sides. It is convenient to divide it by the infinitesimal time, and then you have velocity. And clearly, this seems to suggest the quantity V cross A. So the question is, what does this mean? Like, what is the implication of this, or what, what is the physical relevance of this? Right? So if I want to work with the cross product it involves velocity crossed with the acceleration or the velocity crossed with the force and the idea is uh, what uh, exactly it is and it, i'm going to suggest or i'm going to uh, point out that this is related not really exactly equal but it's related to the curvature so what is curvature so let's uh, let me just uh, hand wave the idea of a curvature. Uh, first of all, we need to have a curvature of what? So when a particle is moving, so if I drop a stone from air, it goes straight down. So that's a trajectory. So it's a straight line trajectory. If I throw it at an angle, it's called a projectile. And that also has a trajectory. So let's have a projectile motion. So that's a projectile. In general, it could be anything. It could be a circular motion. It could be projectile. If it's a planet, it goes in an, a Kepler, a Kepler uh, <coughs> or a elliptical orbit. So whatever is that orbit. And now you could ask at this point, what's the curvature? By curvature, we mean how much is it bending? We want to have an idea of how much is this bending. For that purpose, you say you pick two points. In fact, you need three points here. You have a three points and I try to infinitesimally close by and you try to fit, fit in a circle. So it's a hand waving argument. We want to make this more precise, but that's pretty much what uh, we will uh, do. So we have a trajectory and we want to fit in a circle. So fit a circle. Once you fit a circle, the property of a circle that matters is the radius r and the curvature will be, so curvature will be defined as kappa and that will be one over 
r so the inverse of the radius that means if the radius is really small then you say it has a very high curvature that means it's bending a lot so how much is this bending that's what we are asking and by bending i mean the trajectory that is uh, bending how much is it curving around so that's the one over r dependence and this is this radius so we want to fit in a circle that's not a very easy concept you want to fit in how do you fit in a circle on a curve so we want to make that mathematically more precise and then you you find the radius of that particular circle and the inverse of that is going to be the curvature so that will be the physics of how much something uh, bends so that's the uh, idea <clears throat> okay any questions at this stage i see we have good attendance today i'm really glad yeah hello ines hi yes hi everybody yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah so maybe i should introduce at this stage a few people so at least on my screen on the top left i think he's the first one who logged in is rishi rishikesh he's a faculty in bits pilani it's in the hi. West, western part of uh, india uh, right below him is oh that's my sister that's shamna uh, she's in dubai so we have an international crowd here nice <laughs> uh, uh, then we have david uh, he's uh, he's a history teacher in boston but currently visiting italy he's visiting his daughter and tony is in the background uh, there so uh, so that's uh, uh, from uh, Italy. Then we have Venkat. He's a PhD student in in Trichy, uh, NIT Trichy. Uh, and uh, we have Shankar. He's a faculty in NIT Trichy. As Jupesh is my cousin, and Prachi is my friend and collaborator in in a lot of sense <laughs> yeah so uh cool any questions at this stage as far as i've framed the question okay so let me proceed uh so oh, that i don't Chadesh, delay more uh, yes please sense, yeah yeah in some sense this curve would be uh, kind of a chord oh so the three points uh, on the curve and the three points on the circle, right? They have common three points. Uh, yeah, we need three points to find which circle fits in. That's because, uh, uh, okay, if, uh, if, if I need to fit a, how do you say this? Wait, ready? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, let me try to think a minute. So if you want to fit, uh, I'm thinking in terms of derivative, if you want to take a derivative, you want two points, second derivative needs three points. So in that sense, you need three points. That's why I said three points. Uh, but I can, how can I motivate this better? Uh, yeah, if I, yeah, is, I guess, okay, would it be right to say, like if I want, if I have a circle and if I want to find out what's the radius of the circles, I need at least three points to fix the, fix the circle, three points on the circle. Will that be yeah. right? Help me. Yeah. yeah, so I think uh, that will make, uh, uh, there will be no uh, ambiguity as to which circle this is. And mm -hmm. for that, I need any three points on the circle. So we want to ask, which circle fits in at a certain point so it's not just one point we need we need two points close to that uh, and we are saying it is infinitely close so it's really really tiny a uh, bit close so if we know three points on a line or a curve then we can talk about which circle fits in and in that sense it is pretty precise definition but that still doesn't tell us what is actually the radius so we'll find a mathematical way of finding that uh, radius. Did I answer the equation? I don't know. So basically, you would find the smallest circle which would fit those three points, three close by points, right? Yeah, 
Why do you say smallest? That should be only one circle, right? Yeah, I mean, there are only one point, only one circle would go through three points. Probably, yeah. I think that, that's, a, that's why I think it's a second derivative that gives us the radius of the uh, circle. Shall I proceed? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so then we are, I have to define this curvature in a more uh, precise way. That's what I'll do in the next maybe 10 uh, minutes or 10 or 15 uh, minutes. So let's say we have a trajectory. So that's the trajectory. And I want to define the curvature. So we need to define the position. And what is a trajectory, by the way, is that you have an origin. So that's your origin. It doesn't matter where it is. It's some point in space. And a vector, by vector, I mean a distance and a direction in space. That's the position vector. And if I tell the position of a particle at every time, like one second, two seconds, three seconds. So that's if I evolve the position, that's what I mean by trajectory. And I want to know what is the curvature of that, what circle fits in on the trajectory at every point. So that's position at one uh, time and at some other point at slightly larger time. So it is T plus a, like if you start at seven seconds, you want to go to eight seconds, but you want to make it a small time. So mathematically, we will say this is a small increment in time. That's all that symbol means. This is the position at a certain time, and this is the position at a small increment afterward. And this change, so the part, particle has gone from here to here. This change we will call dr. So I'll keep, you'll probably see this in the next five minutes coming again and again. This just means uh, what is the evolution of the particle that are, or the difference between the two position vectors. And that is where it moves, right? The motion of the particle, when we say velocity of the particle, that's contained in that uh, displacement. So dr we will call is displacement. dr will be a function of time and this will be displacement. Velocity will be related to this. If I divide it by time, that will be the definition of uh, velocity. So velocity V as a function of time, this will be dr with respect to time. <clears throat> so just divide it by the small amount of time. And even though in this diagram, I saw this as a big, significant, big, uh, big displacement, it is, the understanding is that you want to make this as small as possible. And that is taken as a limit. And that's the idea of calculus that when I really make this small, that is this counterintuitive feature that this is getting really small. The numerator is also getting really small. So it seems like there is a zero over a zero, but that uh, ambiguity is removed. And that is what you learn in calculus for at yeah, a very long stretch. But here, velocity is defined at every instant of that uh, trajectory. Let's talk about the direction and, and the magnitude of this uh, uh, dr. So let's uh, first talk about the magnitude. And magnitude will be defined as ds, which is basically the length of this. So there is a vector here. We take the length of that and forget that the direction. It has a length and a direction. And, and for that, I take, since it's a vector, I take a dot product. So let me not write the T dependent. So that's, I take the dot product, but that's a square of that. So take the square root of that. Right? So that's my uh, understanding of distance. So this is the distance between these two points. And I want to make the small, as you make it small, that is a tiny, infinitely tiny, increment we are uh, talking about. If I divide this by time, I'm getting the magnitude of velocity. So this is V, which 
is basically the magnitude of velocity. That means not uh, how fast you're going, but without the information about the direction itself. So that will be defined. In, yes. A clarification, please. Uh, the ds basically is the distance traveled on the trajectory, right? That's the curved line. Correct. So this so, will be, so this is ds if you want. And in the so infinitely you, tiny limit, dr, yeah. the length of dr and ds is the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's only. So in the limit dt going to zero, it is the same. Correct, only in that limit. Otherwise, this is not really, right? That seems to be a small gap in there. But in that infinitely tiny limit, both are the same. Yeah. Again, if you allow me to use that, uh, saying that calculus is being uh, used. Okay, <clears throat> so that's, uh, so a few things I've uh, introduced. Let me call this, uh, uh, or, yeah, in the dis the magnitude of the displacement, let's say, this is the magnitude of velocity, which we'll often refer to as speed sometimes. And uh, once I have this relation, I can also uh, talk about how much length you're going, your, for example, whatever Prachi asked just now, what if you're not really in the infinitesimal? Uh, limit often we are not in realistic terms you are always interested in how far you have gone then you have to add up all these tiny tiny quantities and that's how you will get so if you want to know how far you have traveled then you just add up all these tiny quantities and for that you will do so this is distance will be so distance at some time t minus the distance or s at some time t and at s from s at time zero for example this is at s at zero that's zero let's say and then you reach somewhere here s at t how far have you traveled along that curve so you would say this is equal to zero to time t of uh, what do you say this is magnitude of this velocity so it will be uh, magnitude of this velocity times dt. <clears throat> so it, uh, in principle, that is a way to calculate that. That's all I have done. And these are the basic definitions I will use. So we have displacement, like uh, between two points in space. This is the distance, and this is the magnitude of the velocity. We have velo velocity itself. And one more thing, we will have acceleration. Okay. Cool. Okay, so again, these are standard quantities we would define in the first introductory uh, uh, course in uh, physics. Uh, at so let's say calculus is being used. That's the only non-trivial part, uh, I guess. So I'm going to use these things and now define uh, curvature. So what, is, what is curvature going to be? I have defined magnitude. So whatever is remaining is a direction. So I want to make a unit vector of velocity in this direction. So that's going to be my velocity at this point, but unit velocity. And there is another velocity at the next instant I want to see what is the change in that. So let me um, move this camera to three maybe. So uh, let me define a V hat as the velocity itself divided by the, the magnitude of the velocity. So velocity has a direction and how fast it is going. So when you're, whenever you're moving, you're going in a certain direction and you're going with some speed. So remove that speed part. So you make it constant and just have the direction part of that. So that's mathematically done by dividing out by, so this is a speed, right? So that's your uh, V hat. And curvature now will be the change. So again, we have this curve 
I have a V hat at time t here, and it can change to another point. So this is V, oh, V hat at t plus delta t. So that I, when you increment time a little, the velocity direction has changed. And that change in direction is what will uh, give us the curvature. So the curvature is going to be defined as, at this point, not really the curvature, this is going to be a curvature vector, right? So, so this is a vector associated with vector. So let me call it curvature vector. I don't think this is a standard, standard definition. I don't know, but uh, we'll define that as a vector. And then I'll take the magnitude of that and that will be defined as curvature. But probably this is how it's done. So this is the derivative of V hat. By derivative, I mean how much this is changing. If this changes a lot, that means it's a heavy curvature, lot, uh, big curvature. If it's small, then it's a smaller curvature. But then what am I changing it with? Not with time. Instead, I'm going with along the trajectory. So as I'm moving in the trajectory, S is increasing. So this is an increment in S, right? So as I'm changing S, how is my direction of velocity changing? That's going to be the curvature. So the curvature is change in the direction of velocity with respect to how far you're traveling, right? So that's be, that will be my uh, curvature. Any questions at this stage? That's a crucial definition. So I'll find a more, so this is going to be the definition. So I'm going to now find an expression for this to basically do mathematical, some uh, manipulations of this and write it in a more convenient form. So I'm going to do some algebra if you want and make a better expression out of it. So again, uh, the interpretation is that is the direction of velocity, not the velocity itself. Remove the magnitude part of it or the how fast you're going, only the direction. How much are you changing that velocity? If you're changing a lot, that means you have a, you have the trajectory as a heavy curvature, otherwise it has a smaller curvature. And that mathematically is defined as, and this is with respect to distance. So we are more comfortable with taking derivatives with time changes in time is more convenient. Yes, question. Again, in the question, not question, again, clarification in some sense, like, um, yeah. so we do know a definition for curvature, right? At any point using calculus. Uh, that's what I'm defining. That is what I'm defining. Okay, you're going to like clarify this more, why this dv hat over ds is the curvature vector. Uh, I just defined it, so. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm asking. Like, uh, so I was just asking: oh, Is so it possible to maybe, relate maybe, it with what we already know? Oh, maybe your question is: Is this standard or not? Is that your point? Like something that we already know. At a point, we know that uh, how the curvature uh, is defined in physics, or like or related with acceleration, uh, or yeah, something maybe. like more intuitive. Uh, Okay, what I, when I looked up, this is what I find for curvature, if that helps. This is not what I'm going to have. We crossed A over V cube, and that's the magnitude of that. This is the, when I eventually do it, that's where I'll get, but at this point, I haven't, I don't have that, okay? So this is apparently standard. Okay, I guess and I'm like, sure I'll just, leave it as it seems so natural it seems that it might be standard but i haven't looked up honestly yeah yeah so, so, so while my, you're my working bad. on it maybe you can continue thinking uh -huh. about it like in general we yeah. say that okay if we plot like position versus time graphs and velocity versus time graphs and all and there is a trajectory and then that trajectory let's say what represent the curvature on that trajectory and we relate it with acceleration yeah. and all those this things one. This, this, the answer to your question is this, and that, and I will evaluate the trajectory for some simple examples, let's say Kepler trajectory, uh, like projectile, circle, those kind. Of, I, I, we'll see how much time we have. 
Does yeah. that help? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like maybe I can come back to this in the yeah. end part. Yeah, yeah, come back to me. Yeah. Yeah, be critical. Yeah, I think finish. it all is yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. I think so this does make some intuitive sense uh, because you know you have a unit vector which will be constant yeah. in magnitude. Okay. So um, the only way it can change is change the direction. Right. So as Correct. the path line changes, how much is the change in the direction of this unit vector V? And if it doesn't change, it doesn't curve. If it changes more, it uh, has a more curvature. Because the Correct. unit vector only changes in magnitude of the direction. It cannot change in magnitude because it's a unit vector. The only way it can change is direction. Um, Correct. And uh, I think intuitively, I think if we define, I mean, if you have a shape, then any curve can be looked upon. Suppose you have a curve which is in a plane. Curve in a plane. So I'm not talking about twisted curves, curves which are in a plane. So for a no, no, a... not necessary. I haven't put that restriction here. Even though I'm drawing trajectories on a plane, in principle, this is anything. And in the next equation that we get, we will see that this is not really in the plane. We will get it yeah, yeah. double cross. So I'm saying product. that since we are looking at the infinitesimal variations, so even a twisted curve, yes. if you look at the infinitesimal segment. It would be in some plane. And typically, it is the rate of change of slope. The curvature is d by dx of dy by dx, so d square y by dx squared. I, How does the slope yes, change as we change in dx? So it will boil down to this only. Yeah, yeah. I was like trying to relate it to with that definition. So yeah. maybe that's what I said, Shadesh. Maybe you can clarify it. Yeah, of more. course, there is a more technical way of defining it in differential geometry. Uh, but which will require to you know define an oscillating circle and three points and this normal vector in tangent vector. But I suppose it should boil down to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Rishi. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, those comments help. Shall I proceed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess. Yeah. Okay. So uh so that's going to be the definition of curvature. It's a vector notice, and it's how a direction changes with as along the path. But I'm more comfortable with taking derivative as a time. So I want to switch this to derivative time. Notice that S is a function of time alone. So it's a one parameter, one parameter uh, function. And it's also monotonic because as you go along the curve, it only increases, right? It's not going to decrease at all. It's a distance travel. So anything that is monotonic in time, that means it keeps increasing, is a good, good, uh, good timekeeper if you want. Why? Like for example, if you notice, time is not really well defined, right? Any function that is a function of time itself, if it is monotonic, that that's as good a timekeeper as time itself. So unless you're on the planet earth where you use sun, uh, which is periodic, you use the time of the sun for time keeping. But in general, it could be any function of time. So this could be my function of time or the variable T that I call it as function of time, but I'm more used to defining it as T. So I'm going to switch over to time, right? So the usual uh, time that I define. So make this, as dt over ds by d by dt of v over v, right? So it's just a chain rule. And this, if you notice, is velocity itself, but the inverse of that ds by dt is velocity. So what I have here is, let me erase this, we'll come back to that. So I have one over the magnitude d by dt of velocity over v right so so still trying to get a more convenient expression for the curvature vector so just operate it just do the algebra it has to whenever i take a derivative i had to hit both quantities so there is a vector and the magnitude so that's equal to one over v 
derivative when i hit the numerator derivative of velocity is acceleration so that's acceleration over velocity itself and i can hit the v here which is when i hit this this over this is staying as it is when i hit one over v derivative that is a negative sign that comes out and it becomes a one over v square and i have to hit the argument right but now this is not the velocity this is the magnitude of the velocity right so what's the derivative of the magnitude of the velocity so that's the same as d by dt of square root of v dotted with v and that's nothing but uh, one by two then this comes in the denominator and it is v dotted with a right so this is v dotted with a over v right i've jumped a few steps here but if you take the derivative with v so this comes in the denominator that's your v and then i have to hit each of this velocity that gives me a factor of two but i already had a factor of half there so that's v dotted with a so that's equal to if i put this all together i get v square times acceleration minus v times v dotted with a over v raised to four but remarkably that's nothing but your double cross product so this is nothing but v cross it's not really surprised because this is kind of a projection operator like this is if it's good to see this as v square one uh, or even one minus v v over v square dotted with acceleration right that's a projection and then i need to have one over v square so this is the way you look at it i mean that is a projection and you're removing the velo direction of velocity so whatever is this curvature is never in the direction of the trajectory it's always in a plane perpendicular to that right so that's uh, seen by this projection operator but uh, it's probably more convenient to write this as v cross v cross if you remember your back cab rule that's v times v cross uh, sorry v times v dotted with a minus of v square times a so there's a negative sign divided by v raised to 4 so that's your curvature right so that's a mathematical expression uh, uh, for that uh, if you want the magnitude of that magnitude of that is since the law the cross pro product of a with v will always be perpendicular to v so these two are perpendicular quantities so when it comes to the magnitude i can i can delete one of the v's in there so this is nothing but v crossed with a over v cube just to have a picture of this uh, let's have velocity is the important piece here so that's here uh, i need some space so yeah so that's your velocity v let's say acceleration could be in any direction i picked it to be in the plane v cross a will be uh, into the page into the board so that's v cross a and v crossed with v cross a will be in this direction and that's the direction of of curvature right? so v acceleration that's perpendicular to the to the velocity so curvature is always perpendicular uh, to that and we will work with this definition so this is what i derived so remember this was our definition of curvature right how does a direction of how how much you're moving change along with distance and i found a convenient expression for that which you can evaluate and the magnitude of that is even easier if you know the velocity and acceleration of something that is moving along take the cross product of that divided by the magnitude of the velocity and you get the curvature how how much are you turning uh, around the curve right any questions at this stage prachi that's this is the time for you to ask that whatever you were asking 
regarding the definition? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the projection operator definition makes it much more clear. So that one can relate with. And um, yeah, so I think, uh, uh, and Rishi already commented on that, uh, the, the formal definition of curvature, right? So I think it's better yeah. now. So now that I have the definition of curvature, I can apply this for some popular trajectories, right? Some curves that we have and calculate that and just have a feel for what uh, this uh, is. So let me go back. Okay, so simplest will be circular motion, right? Uh, so let's take an example of uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion means some a particle is going in a circle and it goes the, it takes the same amount of time to travel around once or each time it goes around. So the circular means that its radius is fixed. So R is constant. That's what circular means. So that's a constant. That means when I'm changing something, when I'm taking a derivative, I don't have to worry about changing that. Uniform means how long does it take for one circle? two times, three times, it's the same amount of time it takes every time it goes there. Mathematically speaking, uh, this is angle, how much angles that it takes over time. So the angular speed, this is also constant. That doesn't have to be, like you can go in a circle without, like for example, you can start from rest and then go faster and faster and faster. And that's not uniform circular motion, but we are going to talk about uniform circular uh, motion. In that case, the velocity is equal to the angular speed omega times r times the direction. Remember, direction is playing an important role here. So that's phi hat, right? So that's basically the tangent of a circle. So that's a symbol that tells me that that's a tangent to the circle. At each point on a circle, I can draw a line that meets the circle only at one point, and that's a direction of that in the sense that in which direction are you traveling? Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? <laughs> Acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. This is not changing. This is constant. This is not changing. So it's only the direction uh, or the tangential vector that is changing. And it's change. You can see that at one point it's here. At another point, it has slightly changed. But it's the change is in such a way that the difference between the two is always radially inward. So this quantity here, d by dt of phi hat turns out to be exactly equal to the radial direction and it is negative. And since it is with time, if I had done it with uh, angle, that will be just exactly r hat, but this also introduced as an omega, that's a change from angle to time if you want. In that sense, in this case, angle also can be used as a time variable because it's a monotonous function of uh, time. It keeps increasing. So this is equal to minus omega square r times the radial, uh, radial unit uh, vector. So what is uh, the, what is v crossed a? So that's omega cubed. Uh, so omega cube, r cube, and phi hat crossed with r hat, that's minus z hat, right? So, so this is the radial direction here. So that's your r hat. r hat crossed with phi hat is z hat. So this is minus of that. So this is z hat. And it's clear then that the radius of curvature, oh, did I miss something? Because it's r square, right? It's r square. <clears throat> So kappa will be V crossed with A, magnitude of that divided by 
the velocity cube. So that's omega cube r square divided by v cube, but v is omega r. So that's exactly one over the radius. So for the for something going in a circle, that's intuitively clear that there is only one circle you can uh, attach to a circle, right? So it's the radius of the circle itself. So it's constant. It doesn't change with time. The curvature, how much it bends, doesn't change with time, and you indeed get one over r. So that's the simplest example you could do. Any questions at this stage? So I'll do this for a few more examples. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next uh, we should do like that is projectile motion for sure. But before that, I thought while you're on this, uh, let's do a uh, what's that called? Uh, uniform helical motion, maybe. I don't know whether this is again the standard terminology or not, but what I mean is that something is going along the direction of a spring. So this is, it's taking the same amount of time to come back to this point, but as it comes back, it goes up in the Z direction. So, so that's your Z uh, direction. And in the X, Y plane, the same, uh, to come back to the same point in the X, Y plane, it takes the same amount of time. So in that sense, it is uniform but it is going off the plane every time it goes one circle and it goes the same amount every time. So it's uh, uh, periodic in that uh, sense. That's very close to this. So this is, and one might ask, like at least for me, when I was first time doing this, it was, I was curious as to is the curvature the same or not? Like intuitively, it's not very obvious. You expect that it will be different from one over R, so radius is the radius of this plane here, but then you're shifting off. So you would think that the curvature has slightly changed. So we would like to know how much it has changed, if it has changed. So velocity now is omega r times phi hat, plus it's not just, in, it is slightly going up, correct? So it has a small component in the, in the z direction. And let me call that z dot, right? How much is it? And let's say this is constant. Right, so z dot is a constant too. So that's a particular trajectory I'm building and that's z hat. So that's my velocity. So this makes sure that this is going in a circle. This part makes it go up as every time it goes one circle, it has shifted a little. <clears throat> so acceleration is, is a, uh, is a derivative of this quantity. And since I said this is constant and the direction we had does not change with time. So this does not contribute to any acceleration. So the acceleration remains the same as earlier. So that's R hat. V, uh, we crossed with uh, A then. is this remains the same. So that's omega cube r square times z hat. But now this piece contributes something new, correct? So this is, that is a z hat crossed with r hat. So that's phi hat. So that's minus of omega square r z dot times phi hat. So we need, the magnitude of velocity and magnitude of V. So V is omega square R square plus Z dot square. And magnitude of V cross A is equal to pull out and, and did I get this correct? Yeah, I think, yeah, omega square R square or pull out A. Yeah, so pull out a one over R maybe. And then I have omega square R square and square root of omega square R square plus Z square. And the curvature comes out to be, so let me get some space a little bit. 
So the curvature for this comes out to be one over R is as we had earlier, but then there is another piece Z dot square. <clears throat> right. That's the change in the curvature when you're talking about the spiral. We can take some quick limits. We can ask what happens if Z dot was very much small compared to omega r, like how much the planar speed is extremely large compared to the direction in which it is going. So we have this motion here. So this is Z dot and omega r is in the plane. So if this is really tiny, or infinitely tiny, then these two cancel out and kappa is one over r, which is, which makes sense that then it's a circle, right? So that dominates. The other case when omega z dot is very much large compared to omega r, that's also interesting in that case, this is going really fast. So this spring is stretched out and that's almost a straight line. And if it's a straight line, then it should be zero, right? The curvature is uh, zero. So for that, so this is very large. No, this is very small compared to Z dot. So this is very large compared to this. So it's one over zero. So this kind of goes to uh, zero. So it makes same sense in both cases, a spiral uh, or a helix, uh, helical motion as a zero curvature. So that's two simple examples. Let's take the projectile motion as a next example. And I went ahead and did two more examples of Kepler problem and, and a monopole going on a cone, uh, which is kind of interesting, but I, which I won't do it here, but we have that in the notes that I have posted on the web, like you should be able to access that if you're interested. So I'll just do one more example. That's a projectile motion, right? Should you should do this. The camera, oh, sorry. Thank you. That's a projectile motion. And this is what happens when you throw an object on Earth, right? You throw something and it comes down. So that's called a projectile motion. So uh, it's this projectile is described by how fast you throw, so if you want to decide on a, let's say, uh, even though not the best example, let's say if you want to design a missile, you, you want to decide where it falls, then the, there are only two parameters you need to control. One is how fast you throw and at what angle you throw. That describes everything. So two parameters. <laughs> so what's the velocity of this? This is velocity as a function of time, not the, in, this is the initial velocity. We have gravity downwards. Right? So this is assuming that, yeah, if we're not talking about long range, I mean, so let's say when you throw a stone from here to uh, in a park, let's say when you're throwing a stone, that's the motion we are describing. In that case, it is sufficient to assume that earth is really flat and and the acceleration due to gravity does not change with time uh, so much. In that case, uh, this is V0x, the x component of this velocity does not change because the acceleration is vertical, that does not change uh, at all. So that's I hat, that's, that just means that this is the x hat direction, that's a symbol, plus, the velocity in the y direction is, is decelerating in the sense it's slowing down and it is being slowed down by the acceleration due to gravity. So that's V0y minus GT. That's the motion. This is, again, we spend a lot of time uh, understanding that equation when you're doing uh, uh, in the early part of physics. So I'm assuming that or uh, that all that is uh, uh, comfortable. But uh, in other words, this just means this is an equation that describes this particle that goes uh, along the projectile uh, or uh, along that trajectory. What's the acceleration is easier. Uh, this is a constant, as I said, it doesn't change with time in the horizontal direction. So that's zero. 
and in the vertical direction there is only uniform acceleration due to gravity so that's minus g which is got by taking the derivative there. so that's your uh, acceleration we are interested in the curvature so take v crossed with a and both are in the plane so the the cross product will be coming out of the board it is in the z hat uh, direction and that's minus g v zero x right this times this that's all that contributes and this is in the k hat direction that's coming uh, it's actually going into the uh, board so that's your uh, cross product the magnitude of uh, velocity is this square plus this square so basically our curvature has this expression magnitude is g times v zero x divided by zero x square plus v zero y minus gt square and cube right so this is cube root of that so that's three by two like not the best expression one could have wanted, but that's what it is. If you want, you can also say V zero X is V zero cosine theta in terms of this angle and how fast you're throwing. And V zero Y is V zero sine theta, if that helps. And one thing is straightforward, like we should try to understand what this uh, means. One thing is straightforward. If you were to throw something right up in the air, right? And ask what is the curvature of that uh, of that trajectory? It's going along a straight line, and it should be zero, which is what you get, right? V zero x. If like if you're going straight, this has to be zero, right? So this is zero. Curvature is zero. Except you might ask what happens right on the top, right? It's making a very sharp bend there. So it's really bending too much. So in fact, uh, it seems like the curvature should be infinity there, right? So all for all physical purposes, yeah, it goes straight, curvature is zero, it's not bending, but then it bends really sharp and then comes back. Where do you see that, right? So that's not very uh, clear in that. So uh, what we can do, uh, I think one way, I mean, there are many ways to see that, I think, but what I did for, uh, for illustration purposes, let's fix theta for a moment. So we are going to keep theta equal to 45 degrees. Just to elaborate on, oh, what happens to that curvature right on the um, right when it reaches on. Yes, question, please. Yeah, uh, why should it bend? Because suppose if I throw precisely vertical, and then uh, if it just, uh, if I throw precisely vertical, and if it just, you know, reaches zero and comes back, then... Yeah, what I mean is that, so this is a projectile. Now squeeze this, right? Uh -huh. Like, squeeze this. This has a curvature. This curvature is significantly larger than this curvature. And in the very sharp case, when it goes up and comes down, it seems like the curvature should like the radius of the circle I can fit in there should really go to zero and the curvature probably goes to infinity. That's my, no, no, uh, that's what no. I would suspect. No, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But I'm saying that suppose if you manage to throw it straight up without any horizontal component. Yeah. Then it just goes, stops and faces the same line. Right. Yeah. When it stops, when it stops, what's the, what's so, the, uh, Rishi, Rishi, uh, like, I mean, that's the idea, uh, yeah. right? The only when it is returning on a point, the curvature can go to infinity. No, if it is yeah, going I... completely straight and retraces the same path. Yeah, uh... but there is a there is a path there, right? On the same path, it turned back. So radius is zero basically there, which is what you're trying to say that radius, there is no radius because it's a straight line motion. Then the curvature yes. becomes infinite. So curvature, no, okay, maybe the confusion is curvature need not be a constant for the whole trajectory. It is zero all through the straight line, but then at one point it becomes really huge because you're stopping and then turning back, correct? So curvature is not a constant of 
uh, motion, right? It's a t time dependent quantity. Maybe that's that helps. Is that the point? Uh, I think it. You can also see like two different motions. One motion going up, and then it stops and it goes down. In that sense, you can see it as two different two two motions actually. And in that in in that sense, maybe I agree with a uh, Rishi that um, it's not very well defined at that point. If you consider correct, correct. it that way. Yeah, yeah. I would say that it's not well defined. Maybe that's a correct, uh, more, more, uh, better statement than what I said. I said it's infinity. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Does that clarify, Rishi? You uh, that's. Uh, no? Yeah, so actually we need to understand exactly what happens at the turning point, but if it is not making any loop, my point is, how do I describe the motion if there is no, suppose if you view the motion in the xy plane, if there is no displacement along x-axis, okay, it just goes Correct. y equal to 0 to y equal to say 100 and then again, there is no x direction motion. Then Exactly, so if, no, maybe the point is, if you say there is no v0x, I cannot exactly. do anything. It's undefined. Exactly. It's That's undefined. Agreed. But then maybe we can do slightly better than that. We can say that I'm going to keep my V0x slightly more than zero and then take the limit. Yeah, I'll make no, it smaller that, and smaller. No, that, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that what I think it. I'm doing. So yeah, if yeah, it yeah. is zero to begin with, then yeah, yeah, there yeah. is nothing I can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I completely then, agree with that. So that's the spirit in which uh, we'll go. So let's see. And we can actually take the limit V0x going to uh, zero, but instead I thought uh, it comes out even, uh, even if uh, I think, yeah, even if I keep, uh, or does it? I'm confused now. Uh, no, let's not keep theta equal to 45 degrees. I don't remember what I did. Okay, so. <clears throat> So what I, oh yeah, what I can do you is- You yeah. wanted to take so, the data going to 90 degree limit. No, 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 that's not the, what I wanted to do. I said, okay, I will talk about the highest point. So we are talking about the turning point, right? That's what we are interested in. So let's talk about the time at, at turning point. So at turning point. And that's a well-defined point every time for any projectile, uh, projectile, right? If there is always like turning point in the sense it goes up and then comes down in the vertical direction it is turning, it's coming back, but horizontally, of course, it keeps going. So we're talking about at the highest point, what is the, what is the, what is the uh, curvature? And that has this nice feature that at the highest point, this is zero. Right? That's why I picked that point. At the highest point, this acceleration or deceleration has completely negated this initial velocity that goes to zero, right? This is the initial velocity minus AT, right? That's the final velocity. So at the highest point, that will be exactly zero. It comes to a stop in a sense. So that's equal to zero. So if I set, so this is the, at the turning point, right? So highest point, so at the high, high, let's say. So that's G, V0x divided by V0x cubed. So that's the same as G over V0x squared. So that's V not square times the sine square theta. Did I get this right? I think so. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And now we can ask the same question again, right? So if I want this to be going up, then in the limit, theta tends to 90 degrees, like pi by two, right? then this clearly goes to zero and that approaches infinity. In that sense, the curvature at that turning point is infinity. So in that limiting sense, but of course, I think it's good to point out that if this was zero to begin with, then there is nothing you can uh, do. Uh, you're pretty much stuck there, but this is a good way of uh, seeing that. And there was one more point I could, oh yeah, we could also ask, okay, so usually when you're having projectile motion, this acts like a scale of the problem, right? So this is the scale in the problem, right? either R or the height, right? So, or let's say height, right? So this is height. 
And now I have a new scale in the problem, right? This is the radius of curvature. So ra let me call this RC, right? Radius of curvature is V naught square cosine so square theta over G, right? And you would like to ask, oh, what is this scale compared to this height uh, in, in a general projectile or let's say e equal to uh, when it is theta equal to 45 degrees or something like that. So let's do the RC divided by this range, right? So this is so this is the radius of curvature. So what is a circle you can fit in here? That's a question you're asking. And the range, is it bigger than that or is it smaller than that? That's a question you could ask. And this is V0 square cosine square theta over G divided by the range as an expression, independent expression that's sine two theta over G. Everything cancels and this comes out to be equal. So RC over R is equal to how much? One by two times tangent theta, right? So one by two times tangent theta. And if theta was equal to 45 degrees, that's exactly half, right? So what that means is that if you draw a circle, so, and if you have a projectile that's going, so that'll be like this. So, so the radius of curvature of, of this point here, so you have to move the circle down, right, if I can. So I had to move the circle down. So, so this is height, right? That's half of radius of curvature. So that's something that you can learn out of that. Yeah, sorry about the bad diagram. Yeah, but hopefully that clarifies. I did this for Kepler problem and another example, but I think it's not, I, I think we have enough uh, illustration with this. Uh, and I'll stop here. So you're Thanks. saying, uh, this is useful yes. in better defining the equation of trajectory. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Uh, so how uh, is this quantity useful? How is this quantity useful? Just because you would like to know how much a curve bends. I don't know. How is this useful? Uh, that's a harder question. How is this useful? Uh, Isn't it like it plays a role in the equation of trajectory? I mean, you got one by R in the uniform circular motion, which was a nice quantity. If we didn't know if it was actually uniform circular motion, we would have got one by R and we could have confirmed that it was a uniform circular motion. Yes, but here, this will be, uh, like I'm only talking about the curvature at the highest point. The curvature will be different at this point. I mean, looking at the curvature, we'll be able to know what trajectory it took right now. Yes, so maybe I can write down the equation if it helps. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to help. So for example, uh, Shajish, so I, think, you have, I think Venkat yeah. is not referring to just projectile motion. He's asking like what this quantity could be used for the curvature that you defined. And uh, <laughs> I would say, like I typically say that, like this is independent of what I'm doing today here. If you want to read out acceleration from position time graph, like if you have a position time graph, so typically if you know how far you're going as a function of time, like so let's say this is a path of a particle. So usually, the slope here, right? The slope is the angle here, tangent theta of that, that tells you the speed. But then you might ask what quantity in this diagram gives you the information about acceleration? And I would say it's, the it's a curvature. So the tangent gives you the speed, but how much something bends gives me the idea of acceleration with that V cube and other things that are other things involved. So it's not a clean expression, 
but the acceleration is decided by how much this bends, like the circle that you can fit in here. In that sense, it's a useful quantity, uh, geometrically useful quantity. Uh, did that, is that satisfying? Yeah, Probably yeah, not. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, but yes, I would, okay. I would like to see the equation, uh, somehow this uh, showing the actual equation of trajectory, that would be use, more useful, right? Maybe I'm just assuming. Uh, for the for the projectile motion, I can give you the trajectory. Okay. okay. That's that's reasonably standard, I think. So that's uh, so why so trajectory as a function of x, I suppose. So you are saying y and x, correct? Right? So this is I think I, would, I guess tangent theta x minus g t square, right? So half g t t. So it's x square over v zero square times cosine square. Notice that v zero square over g shows up there. So that's I think this has some information about the about the uh, curvature. I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I tried to plot this and the circle together uh, just for. Uh, understanding purposes. Oh. Uh, so that's why I know that immediately out of my head. Otherwise, I would not know. Otherwise, I would have to derive it here. So in the Kepler trajectory, again, was radius of curvature playing a role? Oh, uh, I, I just derived the Kepler. I can give you the. So yeah, it comes out. So this is the Kepler problem. Let me write it here. In terms of variables that hopefully will be clear, kappa is equal to apparently it's alpha C. Uh, it's the reduced mass, but let me just say the mass of the moving particle. It's the reduced mass actually. And then the angular momentum, which is a fixed quantity in Kepler problem, this is constant. So this is all constant. And then sine cube theta, if I did all my math correct, where sine theta is the angle between R and V. So if, if you have a elliptical orbit, right? So at the, so this is what? This is the perihelion, right? So this is, so the perihelion uh, now velocity is this way. R is in this direction. So this is 90 degrees, right? So this is the maximum. The, so curvature is a maximum at the perihelion and probably here also. And everywhere else, it will be less, right? So for example, here, this is my R and that's my V. So it's not 90 degrees. So it'll be less than that. So it seems to make sense, but I haven't verified this. I just did it and I'm presenting it. So. Hopefully, I'm not, uh, I'm not stupidly wrong, put it like that. So, does that help? Yes. yes. And I also, since, since I thought this was interesting, I just went ahead and did a more complicated problem. If you have a charge in the presence of a magnetic monopole, right? Then, it, then it's interesting that it actually goes on a surface of a cone. That's a well-known result. So it will move on a surface of a cone. And then you can ask again, what is the, what is the uh, radius of curvature? And you can get an a, a expression for that, but I didn't analyze it too much. But I think that's not necessary to present it uh, here. Yeah, so yeah, that's all Shankar. I have. Yeah. Yes, Shankar, me? yes. Yes, uh, uh, yes. I think, I, think, I think in between I missed, missed something. Uh, you gave a derivative of phi, no? Derivative of phi. Uh, phi hat, I think, phi hat. Uh, phi for cap, circular phi cap is minus phi dot r cap. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Is, so the question is, uh, derivative of, Phi hat 
is uh, yeah phi dot. I think Rishi said phi dot, right? Minus so, phi dot R k. Yeah, yeah. I think one uh, uh, blunt way of seeing it would be d by dt of phi hat is d by dt of cosine uh, cosine omega t, I guess, or cosine theta, let's say, cosine theta i plus sine, no, because phi hat is minus sine theta i hat plus cosine theta j hat. So, and then you do the derivative. So this is minus cosine theta i hat minus sine theta j hat. But then I have to take the derivative of theta itself, which is theta dot, which better is phi. But okay, if you allow me, let me change it. Yeah, so that's phi, phi, phi. Phi, and then there's phi dot that's, and that's nothing but minus r hat, right? So I think that's sufficient. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I have one more question. Thank you. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, is this kind of uh, curvature analysis useful to study periodic and aperiodic motion? You should answer that, Shankar. <laughs> you are the <laughs> expert on. <laughs> because for the I, curvature, I guess. Thing. Yeah. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Geometrically, I can see that it will be useful, but uh, probably you have more insight. You should come and. Uh, because uh, we have not looked at the dynamics from the curvature point of view. But, uh, yeah. 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 I think the question is, uh, will it be useful to analyze periodic motion? Yeah, I think so. Like if something is getting repeated, then curvature also will repeat. Or you can ask the question, if something is repeating, what if the curvature doesn't come back to the same point, right? Curvature okay. is not periodic, but the particle is periodic. Then you have this. And Oh, 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 what's that called? Uh, yeah, parallel transport, I suppose, something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. No, okay. Think... Okay. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. We can leave that open, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Shanesh, uh, very, very neat derivation. Very nice uh, interpretation for this uh, crossing the hat with DR. Yeah, uh, still, I we yeah. haven't completely answered, yeah, but it's kind of interesting exercise, I suppose, uh, kind of yeah. gives I think us one, the thought. Uh, one way to look at it is that, uh, you know, um, if, you, um, if, you, um, if you dot it, then of course uh, you have a scalar and you can turn it into a total differential of some quantity. Okay, because an integral will ultimately turn out to be a real number. So it has to be a scalar. So in order to be able to do that, uh, dotting is the only way because then you can turn it into a total differential. Now, when you cross it, there is no way to write, you know, F cross dr as a total differential or MA cross dr as a total differential. So it has to capture a vectorial attribute of the trajectory. Agreed. It, it has to because it cannot... Uh, land you into a total differential and hence a scalar. So it has to capture a vectorial attribute of the trajectory. Now, now when you are when you are dotting or crossing with dr, starting with your second order differential equation, okay, you are essentially integrating once with respect to integrating once. Okay, so your result has to be a function of the velocity, which is a vector. Okay. Yes. Now. Yes. Now, now the only way it can be a scalar function of a vector is when you dot it so that you have a difference of two scalar terms in terms of the kinetic energy. But when you cross it, you are not going to get a difference of because you are not going to get a total differential. So it has to capture the vectorial attribute. And that's why you must capture the curvature of the curve 
because you know the force if you split it into the tangential and the normal part okay if you split the forces along the trajectory and normal to trajectory along the trajectory will change the speed right you can change the magnitude of speed without changing the direction and when you cross it so basically the normal part will capture how much the velocity will change you know if you if you just divide the velocity by its magnitude then you have a velocity unit vector so it has to capture the rate of change of the unit vector and hence the curvature yeah yeah i mean i just this is of course all a posteriori okay <laughs> uh, this is i yeah, in hindsight yeah. now okay <laughs> yeah 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 I don't know. I agree. I agree. agree. In the yeah, hindsight, I'm that. trying to understand you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and I was you... thinking of building something like work energy theorem by uh, integrating over this kappa, like the radius of curvature, mm -hmm. like what's the average radius of curvature. But then I didn't reach uh, anywhere with that, or nothing significant came out of that, so I didn't. No, so but that's I something think we didn't integrate. No, we just tried to. Uh, we had two terms, LHS and RHS. LHS we didn't touch. Your F cross dr. On the RHS, you have a ma cross dr, which you turned into a v cross a. Correct. Related to v cross. A. Okay. So we just tried to understand what is this v cross a related to. We didn't really try to exactly. integrate. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, like so. I was continuing on that point. The, the as you are saying, Charish, so you have already tried it, right? To build something like work energy theorem. I think it might be worth pursuing a little bit more because right hand side has some physical meaning at, associated with it, right? We know what is the effect of this thing, whatever you're building yeah. on the left hand side. Yeah. But yeah. if it is a very concrete uh, thing that uh, that can be talked about in the right hand side as an effect, then maybe we can. You can define something that what left hand side the agreed. causing agent can be called yeah no i agreed but i was out of time honestly so yeah, these things take more time yeah i i had yeah uh, i think I, I i'm interested in thinking about that yeah yeah so very neat Rajesh. okay cool yeah, nice to see uh, some activity in here. So all through we had one or two or zero attendance and today we had uh, mm -hmm. 10 plus, we have about four people in this room here. I should be. Nice uh, I should. Um, so, so, so Just a comment so on people. the Shankar's question. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Just one comment also, you know, this uh, phi dot, uh, phi cap, d phi cap by dt, minus phi dot r cap the, the another way to see it is that you know you are trying to find the uh, time rate of change of a constant vector okay so the, time rate of change of a constant vector yeah d phi cap by dt constant in sorry constant in magnitude sorry yes the vector which stays yeah. constant in magnitude so when a vector a unit vector ah or this is true for any vector which stays constant in magnitude, true, did not true, be unit vector. True, true. So true. a vector which stays constant in magnitude, the only way it can change is rotate. So as it rotates, uh, it will actually move tangentially. So that's why the time rate of change has to be orthogonal to its initial direction. So that's why it's R cap. And it has to be proportional to the rate of rotation, you know, because yeah. I mean, I mean uh, dimensionally, it has to be proportional to the uh, angular speed of rotation. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I agree. Phi dot is the only way it can. Uh, so this is true for any vector which stays constant in magnitude, not just phi cap. So any fixed uh, or any vector, that or any vector in, that changes. That stays constant in, like, in magnitude, but only changes in direction. Because only way it can change is by rotating, right? Only then it can stay constant in magnitude. And when it rotates, that change dr is orthogonal to initial r. So basically, it's an isosceles triangle, and that tangent exactly. to the isosceles. Exactly. Always, yeah. 
that uh, uh, so that the base of the triangle actually quantifies the change the orthogonal right. which is orthogonal to the initial direction so it will be always orthogonal to the initial direction and proportional to pi dot Nice, nice, nice. Okay, cool. So I'll again, if I think- Sajesh, thank you for- Yeah. Sajesh, you thank you for giving such a nice talk. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you know, particularly it's a very, uh, very lucid talk on the subject of curvature. Definitely it's going to be useful at the students level as well as even for the people who have been working in physics for many years. Yeah, very lucid talk. Thank you. <laughs> nice, nice. Thanks. Anchor. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, okay Shadesh, thanks. I'll take a leave. I have to take my kid for this physiotherapy. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we still went one and a half hours. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll stop the recording alone, but we can. <laughs>